you ready? So we're gonna try one of their recipes. It is sausage and mushroom pasta. Doesn't that look delicious? So according to this, it is really simple. 10 minutes, 15 minutes cooking. It takes 10 minutes to prepare, 15 minutes cooking. And I think the 10 minutes is really cutting up your uh, your tomatoes. But it looks very simple and I am sure when we make this pasta, it's going to be delicious. So I'm not going to claim this recipe to be mine. Uh, this recipe belongs to uh, the Rock One Pot Booklet. So here we go. Uh, it tells you you basically need one pound of pasta. So that will be about half of this package that my daughter pulled out of the... Um, of the pantry uh, they say to use some pre-cooked sausage well I do have some pre-cooked sausage I'm gonna pull out the sausage that I made there's a recipe I made not long ago about a week ago it is my deli sausage and trust me that sausage is delicious so I am just gonna put my pot aside for now right up here in the corner so this way we can throw things in as I prepare it here we go. I am going to start with my sausage. Okay, and this is what I do to my sausage. Once I've made my sausage, I vacuum seal it. Look how tight it is. I do add just a little bit of fat oil in the package. Even if you don't want to add the oil, it's going to stay moist on you because you are vacuum sealing this. And I always try and make my bag just a little bigger so when I wash it, I can still put another sausage in there and when I seal it, it's going to come down to here. So I'll be able to reuse this bag over and over again. So the trick is to cut it right to the edge of where I sealed it. And this way, after I wash it, I'm able to put a new piece of sausage in here and seal it up to here. So I'll be able to reuse this bag a few times. So what I'm throwing into the recycle bin basically would be this bit. I know we shouldn't use plastic. I keep saying I'm not going to use plastic. But if we're going to vacuum seal these uh, and let them last a long time in the refrigerator, we do need to use this type of system. Otherwise, what you can also do, and I'm only using this because I already have it, but what you can also do is um, just leave them wrapped the way you make your sausage with the parchment and then the aluminum and you can freeze it. So I'm going to get a cutting board, my trusty little cutting board, and I am going to cut this in kind of cubes or you can cut them in rings. It really is up to you. Maybe we'll do, yeah, maybe we're going to do half rings. How's that? Yeah, we're going to do half rings. And we're going to cut them nice and thick. And here is my star fruit knife that I love using. I have a few of them. And you know what? There we go. We're going to cut them one more time. And if anybody's interested in this recipe, I have it up on YouTube. Super delicious. And if you don't want to use apple, um, some people asked, what can I use to replace the apple or replace the pepper? Well, what you could do is chop up some onions in smaller pieces. So there we go. So, okay. So there's my sausage that the recipe asks for. And I'm also going to use an onion. Now, also remember, guys, you can substitute these recipes any way you want. Uh, if you don't want onion, maybe you want to do garlic, you could do it that way. But we're going to throw a little, a small onion to this recipe. There we go. Put this aside for now. Okay, let's not lose a fingernail. Sometimes when you're in a hurry, you do stupid things. Okay. So, we're going to slice it thinly like the recipe asks for. You can put the whole onion like I'm doing, or if you want, uh, you can simply um, use only half. Okay. 
but when it comes to the liquid and the tomato part I think you should go according to the recipe so this way you don't have a very either soggy pasta or you don't have uh, very dry pasta because remember we're putting everything in here and it needs to have the amount of liquids they recommend to cook your pasta okay I'm gonna start crying soon I'm crying over dinner hope I don't start tearing otherwise I'm gonna lose a finger chopping these this onion okay here we go yum yum okay so mushrooms now I'll show you what I have There we go. I have some wild picked mushrooms that we picked over the weekend. Um, these are chanterelles, but I'll tell you now, and they're young and they're small. We picked them only because, and we didn't pick them all because if I, ugh, I would have picked them all, but I'm waiting for them to grow so I could get them next, next week. But if you're not sure about picking mushroom, guys, don't pick those mushrooms when they're very small because you're not going to know if it's a good mushroom or if it's a bad mu mushroom, especially if you don't know your mushrooms, okay? Um, we know these are chanterelles, so we pick them a little younger than we should. These should be nice and big. The top head should be about that size. But because we saw them for the first time again, our... Uh, should we, should we not, and we did. But I'm glad we did because I'm going to throw these into our recipe. Rather than using other mushrooms, we're going to use these ones. So we're going to have chanterelles in here. But remember, you could always go to your local market. And there's time for mushrooms now. So guys, if you go to your market... You're probably going to find some delicious wild mushrooms there. Otherwise, you're going to have to go to your local grocery store and pick whatever mushrooms they have on hand for you. So, this recipe really doesn't take long to make. It just takes long to cut up whatever you're cutting. But if you're doing this ahead of time, if you're preparing your stuff ahead of time, dinner could be done in 15 minutes. Mm, I can't wait to eat these chanterelles. Oh. There we go. I can't wait to go and pick some more. Remember guys, if you don't know your mushrooms, before you put it in your mouth, make sure you know what you're eating. Look at that. One little bullet. We picked it over the weekend so what I'm gonna do is just take off the top skin of this I'm taking it off because it's a little dirty and I didn't clean it when we picked it up and this little guy was freshly grown but the slugs had already got to it so there's a couple of holes that I don't mind eating it it's pretty fresh guys there's no bugs when I pick bolitas I like to pick them fresh like you could tell when they're fresh uh, because otherwise the bugs get into the bolitas before you do and then you have to kind of pick around it and I'm not into eating bugs okay so here we have some beautiful oyster mushrooms they've been sitting in my fridge so they're kind of a little dry but they're gonna be just as good once we throw them in here Beautiful, beautiful oyster mushrooms. Like I said, if you don't know what you're picking, don't pick them, guys. Learn your mushrooms before you go or before you put them in your mouth. You can go search for them. You can go look for them. But before you put anything in your mouth, make sure you know what you're eating. And where do you find oyster mushrooms? Either fallen trees or dying trees. You'll see clusters of them. They look like basically clams. But be careful because there's also one called angel wings. And not everybody can eat those. Some, some people can, but not everybody can. So these are the mushrooms I'm using today, guys. 
me just take off the butt here. Okay. So there's the mushrooms I'm going to use in this recipe. And otherwise, follow the booklet. It'll tell you exactly what to use in, in this uh, recipe. Okay, so we're going to uh, slice up or we're going to crush some garlic. Isn't this easy? Just throw everything in a pot. And I'm using this beautiful pot that, oh, look at this. We almost left a little one here. There's that. And there's this. It's a little dry, but he's going to go in anyhow. So this is a beautiful pot that Starfish was so generous to send me to review. And they were super awesome in not only sending it to me, but to a new one, an extra one, as a giveaway. So, okay, nice big garlic. Okay, I've got, I guess two large garlic is more, more than enough. And we're going to crush this so we don't have big chunks under our teeth. I keep losing my nails. Every time I go hiking, lost this one, lost that one. Now, last week we were supposed to go hiking on a new trail and, okay, that's not good. Let's throw that out. There we go. Uh, on a new trail, but my daughter had the wrong track, the wrong uh, shoes on and because it was all uphill, we decided it was better safe than sorry, so we did not go on the trail. But we did walk all the way from one town to the other, which made up for what we didn't do on the trail we wanted to go on. But we are going to try again this weekend. And if we do make it, I want to record it for you guys so you get to see something different and something beautiful. These, This is my passion now, guys. Besides picking mushrooms and cooking, I love hiking. I'm going to cut this big garlic in half because it won't even fit in here. The other half. Oh, in you go. And sorry for the noise because they are repairing our street. So we've been listening to this since like 7 o'clock in the morning. All you year is them digging up the road. And we just had our sidewalks um, repaired. They're done new again. But now they're doing the street, so we're living in, we're living with noise. Okay, so here we go. Um, so I apologize if you hear noises other than my cooking here. So we're going to put some salt, salt to taste, I guess. And we could always add more later if you find that uh, it's not enough. So I put about a teaspoon of salt in this. Uh, we want to put some maybe black pepper. I'm using, of course, black pepper. But remember, you could always add more on top of your pasta later on. Right? Okay, so we've got some black pepper. Uh, let's see. We've got mushrooms. Uh, so now we're going to put some basil leaves. They say about 20, 30 basil leaves. But if I don't have enough basil leaf, what I could do is I could simply, if I don't have enough basil leaf, I can simply put some pesto. And that's something else that you can do too. If you don't have any, um, any fresh basil and you have pesto on hand, you can do that. And they asked for quite a bit, and I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough basil leaves. 
But like I said, if I don't have enough, I mean, I could go out in the garden and get some. But if I don't have enough, I can simply just... This is good. Okay, there we go. Now they say about one pound of pasta. And I have a big package, but I'm going to split that in half. I'm going to throw it in now. This all gets cooked at the same time. And it's a, kind of like a fresh... like a fresh sauce okay there we go look at that see how big this pot is my pasta fits perfect in here there we go I think that's more than enough about half a package yeah I'm just gonna put a little extra just for the fun of it Okay, so we have our long pasta in there, and if you want, you can use penny. Erica wanted the spaghetti, so that's what we're going to do. And now we're going to add, we need about three cups of uh, cherry tomatoes or, where is it? There we go, and I'm using a mixed brand. them in half. You could cut them in quarters if you want. Okay, so I've already reached the three uh, cup mark, but I am going to add even the rest because I don't think it's going to hurt this recipe at all. So I'm putting a whole package and I'll tell you exactly the amount that it was and like I said mine is a mix but you can put whatever cherry or a little Roma tomatoes you like if you want and you don't have this what you could do if you only have large tomatoes just dice them up or cut them in smaller cubes and you could use that it doesn't have to be a cherry tomato so I've got like about four cups in here and I think it's going to work just as good with the recipe. There we go. So yeah, I've got about four cups here. A cup more than they ask for, but you know what? It's all good. So here is the cherry tomatoes and what I'm using is 681 grams of the cherry tomatoes. Okay, so now they're asking for water four and a half cups of water or uh, 1.1 liter. So that's what we're gonna add to that. Okay, there's my four. And there's my half. Okay. All right, so I'm going to bring this to a boil and then, here we go, we cover it. I'm going to bring this to a boil and then I am going to uh, simmer it. So, there you go. The recipe calls for uh, to bring it to a boil, cover and bring to a boil, adjust your heat to a medium low and stir and simmer uncovered for about uh, 10 minutes um, until the pasta is al dente. Now I wish I had the beautiful fettuccine, I didn't have that, but we're making spaghetti and we're going to follow this recipe and I'm sure it's going to be delicious. So I'll see you in a bit guys. This is one of the easiest recipes ever. 
Thumbs up, Starfrit. Thumbs up, The Rock. My basil. This is a Thai basil that I picked up at the market. And what I do is I just throw them in a jar because I didn't get a chance to go out and get some... Uh, some basil to plant. I've already planted some of this because it's already rooted and I put some in this cup here to see if I can root it without the water and it's working just fine. Uh, a little stronger than the regular basil but you know what? Uh, that's the Thai one. This is the one I just put in. This is the Italian basil. Sorry. That's the Italian basil. This is the Thai basil. And how do you know? Look at the stem. The Thai basil is got a purple stem and the Italian basil is got a green stem. But that's going to also root for me and I'll have plenty of basil in the house and some to put out in the garden. So here we go. It's starting to boil. Blind you yet? Oop. Okay, so they say to uh, bring it down to a medium low heat, which I did. And now I can whoop. Maybe this is too low. There we go. Okay, so a little higher. That was way too low. So that's it. Now I'm gonna cook it for let me see what are they saying? Man, I usually I'm not very good in following recipes, guys. <laughs> I really am not. Uh, so what it says here is stir and simmer uncovered for 10 minutes until the pasta is al dente and adjust seasoning and then at the end we will at the end we will add some cheese but isn't that great look at that we've got the pasta we've got everything in there there we go I'm just going to cover for a few more minutes just to get it up again with the boiling kind of semi cover it this way it doesn't squirt everywhere but there you go very easy 10 minutes it took longer to cut the tomatoes and uh, the other ingredients than it did to put everything together and let it cook in the pot so I'm gonna show you what it looks like once it's done guys for now. so I put a timer on my on my stove and hopefully we'll have dinner in no time at all. Okay, so here we go. We have the timer and this is ready. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Beautiful. Look at this. Oh, I hope I don't steam you up. So there is a beautiful pasta we just made and it took us like no time at all really. If you have all these vegetables prepared ahead of time, you can simply throw everything together and cook your meal in 10 minutes on the stove. Uh, I did use an extra cup of tomatoes, but that's okay. And um, the water, I put the amount they asked for. Now they do recommend that you taste it for other seasonings. So if you're not, uh, let me just put this aside. Here we go. Um, they do ask to taste it to see if you're okay with the salt. We put just one teaspoon, but we can put we can put a little extra. So all we're left now is to add cheese. What I'm gonna also do is add some olive oil. Oh, sorry about that. And I'm going to add some of my grated cheese. Now, I wanted to show you, uh, these are some of my uh, grated cheese that uh, I didn't quite make it in time to eat. So what I do is I dry them up completely and then I can use it on my pasta. 
and you can just grate it up just like any animal cheese that you buy at the store. The only difference is we didn't have to use animals for this recipe. And if you want to know how to make some of these recipes, I have a lot of cheese recipes up that you can do yourself. Let me just take off that. So there we go. We have grated cheese. And I'm going to put just a little bit of pesto oil and dinner is ready. So I hope you like this recipe, guys. And I'm going to say good luck again because when you see this, that Starfit pot is still up for you to go put your name to be part of that giveaway. So I'm going to say good luck to everyone. And guess what? I'll see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends.